Hello, Abiding Hope family, and welcome to worship. We're so thankful that you could join us. And as we gather, we, we know that Christ is truly present in, with, and under us, and as well as the elements, wherever they may be, the wine, the bread, the grape juice, wherever we gather, we know that Christ is with us in those things. So we invite you to have those uh, ready for that time in our worship when we will be celebrating communion. We also know at this time that many people are preparing their hearts and minds as they head back into schools. And so we want you to know that wherever you are, we're thinking of you, we're praying for you, and we're praying that this year will be a year where you'll feel encouraged, where you'll learn new things, and that you'll feel safe in the environments that you are um, living in. And now, let us begin worship. God's holy dumping ground. Here in this place, we can let loose all of that holds us back. And in these moments, we can gracefully accept our brokenness and step away from its power over us. Fear may often get the better of us, but today, let us choose to step closer to love and hope. Let us lean into God's vision for love and life for all creation. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God, your reign is like a great treasure, a treasure that takes over our life. Whether it's seeds that grow into trees or pearls that we own, and by owning them, we can own nothing else. Your life, your message, your, your, your hope, for the whole world is the greatest treasure of all. God, sometimes we place our treasure in the wrong places. But your son showed us and reminded us that where the, our treasure is where our heart is. On this day, help us to see where we have put our treasures and to ask ourselves the good and honest questions if this is where your heart is as well. Open us up to new ways of seeing the world. Open us up to the treasures that you have given us so that we can grow deeper and deeper into the life that you truly want for us. 
so that we can put our treasures where your heart is as well. We pray all these things in the name of love, whose name is Jesus. Amen. Today's reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let this house be broken into. You must also be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So there was a time in my life where someone taught me that um, prayer postures affect the way you pray to God. Um, it was a little bit of a joke before we would pray. We would assume, say, assume your favorite prayer posture and people would like fall all over each other. Um, but it came out of talking about the difference between if we pray with our palms facing up like this, or if we pray the way many of us have been taught to pray with our, our hands uh, held together and our heads down and our eyes closed. And I remember being taught to pray this way as a kid by a pastor who said, we, we folded our hands so that our hands would not distract ourselves from prayer. And we looked down and we closed our eyes so that our eyes would not distract us from the prayer. And we would listen for the quiet so that God's peace might fall over us. And I don't think that way of praying is wrong, but it is very inward focus. Right? This pastor's point was that if we are out in the world, we are not focused on prayer compared to praying with our palms open or sometimes praying with our palms by our side as we walk, where we are indicating and we are focusing our bodies in on receiving something from God along with the world, right? I'm asking God to give me guidance and to give me comfort in the same way that I hold my hands out when I ask for something from another person. It's much more open, it's a little bit more vulnerable, and it's taking my prayer into the world, right? My posture is, is expecting prayer to launch me into the world as opposed to bringing me in to myself. Well, I've noticed lately that while this was at one point my sort of default prayer posture, I've noticed lately that I've been doing a whole lot more of this. I've been doing a whole lot more maybe <sighs> fear-based prayer or just prayer of, of a need for comfort. The more stressed I am, the more my shoulders are maybe slouching in naturally out of, out of some stress or the feeling like I'm carrying the weight of the world, the more internal I go. But our text today, it tells us to hold our palms up, not literally, 
but it tells us to, to sit in this posture with the world. The first line says, do not be afraid. And I have not counted them personally myself. Maybe if I get about 45 hours worth of free time here this week, I'll do it then. But, but the internet tells me there are over 300 mentions of do not be afraid or fear not in the biblical text, one of the most used phrases. So we start our text with do not be afraid. The next line, though, is really interesting. It says that God gets pleasure out of giving you the kingdom. God gets pleasure out of providing for us. So it's do not be afraid you will be taken care of by someone who gets immense joy, who wants to take care of you, right? It's not do not be afraid. God has a really big army with bigger guns than the other people. It's not do not be afraid. God will give you whatever you want. But it's do not be afraid. God gets pleasure. God gets excited. It brings God joy to give you the kingdom of God to give you the kingdom of God, which is to say to have you interacting with the world in ways that bring life and love. And it brings God that joy because God cares about us. Because God doesn't want us living closed up out of stress with our shoulders hunched and our hands so tightly bound together. God wants us to experience and expect joy and love in our world, even when there might be logical reasons to be afraid, right? This is, this is God telling us not to be afraid because God has this big picture in mind about what really matters of love and life. And so don't hear from me today, please don't hear like there's nothing to be afraid of. There are very real things to be afraid of in this world. Have I saved enough for retirement? Will my kids be okay? Is, am I going to get into a car accident? Is a snake going to come bite me? That's a very real fear of mine. There are very real fears in this world, but our text tells us, the whole biblical text, not just the little chunk in Luke we read today, tells us that God is with us, right? That is what the cross and resurrection means, that that God is with us in the worst moments, when it feels like there is no reason to be hopeful, when it feels like there is no reason to even be optimistic that things will turn around, when we are hanging on a cross when we don't see the next day, when everything is foggy, God is there. And that's why we're not afraid. It's not because things are magically going to do a 180 tomorrow in our world, though I hope they will. Because God is with us in the pit, in the midst of it. So God says, do not be afraid because I'm giving you the kingdom of God. I'm bringing people alongside you to love you. I love you and I'm bringing you moments of peace and respite along the way and I am holding your hand. I'm sitting with you in the dark. That is what do not be afraid means. And after our text tells us that it is God's pleasure to bring us the kingdom of God, we get a whole slew of metaphors, which if you're like me, seem a little bit contradictory, but they're sort of divided into two parts. The first one is about possessions and wealth right? Where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. It's this warning that when we get too caught up in what we have, or more importantly, what we don't have, when we get too worried about money, we are pulling our attention away from love and life, and we are pulling it into things of this world that just don't matter. You can't pray for God to to send you what you need like this if you're holding on to what you already have. So the first part is about letting go of our possessions, about giving our money away to places of love and life. It's about living more nimbly in our world. And the second is about being ready to meet God. The second part of this text is is about staying up and watching and waiting and expecting to meet God in our lives. It's about always being ready to respond to those moments of resurrection in our world. Maybe to help a moment of resurrection happen. So so being in a posture with our, our palms up is about looking around our world and noticing things we don't always notice so that we might participate in the kingdom of God. It's about noticing those people that maybe you walk past every day, maybe this is the first time you've seen them, and starting 
of relationship, of connection. It's about noticing moments where you can care for our planet. It's about noticing moments where you can put aside the to-do list and you can live more vulnerably. You can be willing to say, I did not get that done because I was spending time with people that I love. And here's the really good news. The people of Abiding Hope already know how to do this. You already know how to do this. The people of Abiding Hope have welcomed me, the pastoral intern, for just a year into your lives in a way that has been an honor and a privilege. When people meet me, I can almost feel that they expect us to have a good relationship, that you're willing to share things with me that, that are sometimes kept private from other people, that you're willing to trust that I will hold that with you. And when I've been having bad days, people have helped me fix my cars or just listened to me rant or taken me out for a meal and given some of their wealth to provide me a sense of comfort and security. You already know how to do this. To live not out of fear, but to live into love, even if it doesn't make logical sense, even if it's more vulnerable, to live into love. So all we get to do all we have to do, the only next step, is to just make sure that we're continuing to expand that love. Outside of the walls of Abiding Hope, outside of the emails, some of you online folks, I haven't gotten the pleasure of meeting, but I've gotten messages of love. You've poured yourselves out to me. And we do that for everyone. So this week, live a little bit more vulnerably. Ready to receive a nudge from God about someone else that you can welcome them in as if they're the pastoral intern of abiding hope, perhaps. That you can welcome them into your lives by being vulnerable emotionally, by giving whatever wealth you might have to share if they need it, and by sharing the love of God without fear that you'll be hurt. Do not be afraid. Sow seeds of love and life in our world. Amen. Let us pray. God, we draw near to you with the simple desire to be refreshed by your love and grace. Out of our brokenness, we seek you in prayer, and with humility, we ask for your healing touch. As we pray, come to us, hear us, and transform us. We lift to you all who struggle to experience love and life due to repression brought about by injustice, cultural and social insensitivity, and economic hardships. As we strive to be love and hope in the world, ignite in us a passion to dissolve and dismantle any obstacle obstructing the path to, towards experiencing real life. You have created us to be in loving relationship with each other. You equip us to be love and hope 
to the lost and hurting, yet too often we choose the easier path of inaction and avoidance. Today we lift up those who are struggling, suffering, or mourning, and we ask for the strength and guidance to be a healing presence in the midst of their pain. Lay your healing touch upon them and bless the steps of our journey as we walk with them along the way. God of the journey, we give you thanks for your love which guides our path towards love and life. Continue to inspire us to engage gifts and life in ways that lead towards the healing and restoration of your creation and use our gifts in ways that bring love and life to all in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Encouraged to choose love, we are bold to, to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. When we think about our hearts and our treasures, when we think about living out of fear or joy, it's easy to, to, to try to figure out where to place those things. And it's like God knew that we would need a place to go to remember so that we wouldn't forget where our true treasure lies. Here, when we gather at the meal, it's like we have a moment where heaven and earth meet here and it becomes a thin place, a place, a place where, where the the distance between heaven and earth feel just like a paper thin place. It's here that we know that Christ joins us and to remind us to be God's children. And so a little bread, a little wine, it's much more than a snack. It's God truly being present with us. And so we invite you to share this with one another wherever you are at. If you are with people, we invite you to break a piece of bread and share that saying the body of Christ is given for you and to Pass the cup of wine or grape juice saying the blood of Christ is shed for you. But if you're on your own and you're watching this, know this. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. And the gifts of God are free.
Now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. As we continue our journey on the way, may God ignite in you a spirit of wonder. May you be inspired to see the world as it could be when we choose love and hope over all else. And may we find ways to co-op, co-create God's kingdom here in our lives today. So love God, serve God. Love all, serve all. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the triune God. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it don't matter, we are so